So you're here. It's great. It's great. No one cares, but that's all right. The intemperance, all right? It is a Romacraft, but it is a intemperance cigars. So Romacraft is the brand, but intemperance is the blend, but intemperance, I guess, is a brand within the brand because there's different sizes and different models. I, I remember it was a lighter one, right? Whiskey something, I don't know. But, so, you know, it's been around for a bit, I think. Um, the overall expression of the cigar is a very well made, nice looking Maduro stick. It's on the chunkier side. I feel like it's a five by 54 or 56. I can't tell. Maybe 56. It's a big, it's a big uh, gauge there. Um, the model of the Intemperance is the BAXXI, which is 21, which is maybe that's the year. BA, they said it was for the Brazilian rap. This is a Nicaraguan cigar. <clears throat> Does anyone care? Uh, you want to use soft, gentle heat. I can't. That's it or not. I don't know, man. Huh? I'm left up. <laughs> All right, let me try it again. <laughs> there we go. We got big, soft, gentle heat. A match to light a match is the perfect match. Now, Gio, if you're out there, I hope you're doing well, Gio. I hope my match doesn't go out. It's rather windy out. It's rather windy out. Rather windy out today. Now, I did have the cigar sit out for about 30 hours. I bought it like two days ago, two, three days ago, making sure it wasn't too moist. Take your time. Just take your time. And we're good. It's a good draw. Up up front, um, and let me be honest, I bought two of these, and this is the second time I had it. But Friday night I had one, and it was my second cigar after a strong, heavy Nicaraguan Maduro. So, I wasn't really paying attention to it, and I was just hanging out. So, six and one half of the other. If you're first time having a cigar, and you had a cigar before that, and it was a long, heavy, strong cigar, you're not gonna get, you know, the true intention of the cigar. Smoke out, but it's good. It is chocolatey. It is a sweet chocolatey cigar. The initial impression is not of, of a scary cigar. The initial impression, it's more of a moderate Maduro. You know, it, it's not so intense. I mean, I'm not saying it's mild. <laughs> but this is the initial impression. But here's the thing. I did already have it Friday night. And the last like two inches of the cigar on Friday night, maybe two and a half, really picked up. Like, 
really big. So we'll see if that happens again. A very sweet milk chocolate, black pepper. <clears throat> Choke me up there. <clears throat> Slightly salty on the finish. It's not a bad tasting cigar. Would I put it on my list? No. But is it a good cigar? Oh yeah. Is it delicious? Yeah. Is it worth checking out at least one time? I think so. I think so. And I'll tell you what, it's tasting better. I'm getting more flavored now on this one than the first one because the one I had Friday had it after a much stronger cigar than this. Um, and think about it, so cigars generally get strong as you go, as you smoke them. So you end the last cigar, obviously on the last third, which is the strongest part. And then you're gonna start the second cigar on the first third, which is the weakest part. So the, almost the first third is a wash because you have so much nicotine uh, you know, in your system, tobacco on your tongue. <laughs> You get what I'm trying to say. Some vague, uh, some vague spices going on as well. So, look, the cigar is good. It's not a Liga Number no. Nine. It's not a Milano Vimadoro. It's not a Patron Sixty Four. But it's a good cigar. I would consider this a good mid-tier cigar worth ten dollars you know uh, of good quality and i do enjoy roma craft um the cigar has a pretty heavy feel a pretty thick uh um, pack on it so i mean look, nice looking around i would recommend it as long as you know what you're getting you know solid mid-tier you know If you like, if you like the uh, My Father, La Apalencia, I think you'd like this cigar. Now, granted, though, if I had this cigar in a Robusto or Corona, like I can get the La Apalencia, this cigar would be a lot stronger. I know that for a fact. This is a fat gauge. This is 54 or 56. That really opens up the cigar. It has much more room for air and for smoke to blow through uh, the cigar. The cigar is also the delivery device. It's, trying to understand cigars, it would be like if the water you were drinking in the cup, but the cup was made of water. And I'm not talking about ice. Maybe. But, no. Still the same. Because if you change the shape of the cup, the diameter, the water is going to taste the same. So, yeah. A cigar is a physical device that, dest that destroys itself spiritually. Or, yeah, it is destroyed with fire, but it turns to smoke. Right? You get what I'm trying to say. Some raw sugar coming in as well. I think it's a nice tasting cigar. It, it definitely doesn't feel uh, raw, like a raw cigar as far as, it's not aged. When I say raw sugar, like crystal sugar, you know, like, like the rock candy sugar was. So um, yeah, it definitely has good fermentation. It doesn't feel like it needs more time. Um, it's definitely not a low quality cigar or not even a low mid-tier cigar. I would consider this a very good mid-tier cigar. I think in temperance, I'm sorry, I think Roma Craft is a solid brand. I think they make some great, some great stuff. I would have rather had this cigar in Robusto, but it is what it is. And I mean that in the classical sense, 5x50, 5x49, 5x48. Finish medium and medium. Medium and left finish, medium strength. So it's not overbearing. It is. At this point, too, if you like the uh, Macanudo Maduro or the Ashton Age Maduro or the um, Fuente Hemingway uh, Maduros, then you would like this cigar. 
It is delicious. It's a Maduro cigar. In fact, it's more about being delicious than being strong or spicy. Although it has some strength, it has some spice, but that's not the priority. But I think, once again, you change the size, you change the blend. If I can have this in a 50 gauge, 50, even 52, but a 50 or 48, I think you'd be looking at a different cigar. How strong is it right now? Medium plus. Medium plus. How dark is this cigar? 50%? 75%. So it's three quarter darkness and almost three quarter strength, but it's less than three quarter strength. So it's, it's a very, very comfortable cigar. And we'll see what happens later on. You stay fresh, you eat your prunes, maybe I'll come back. And Gio. I'm disappointed. So you're here in your back, and uh, we're towards the end of the cigar. So uh, operating perfect. The draw was very good. The burn's very good, perfect on that part. Ash is great, right? Touch up, but. But I could have touched up the back, but my hands are cold and I feel like fucking with a match. Um, that is not the cigar's fault. Um, it is rather windy out, and I'm telling you, wind and cold, I think it didn't happen right away. But by that point, once the wrapper started not catching up in the front, like this cigar has been outside at that point for like 40, 45 minutes. Um, and it's cold, it's like 29 degrees. <sighs> um, tobacco doesn't like 29 degrees. So I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna do an ash test of that. Yeah. Well, I tapped it twice, it didn't go. Three, four times, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It took 10 taps. Wow. Wow. Ten, ten taps. <laughs> Wind will mess up everything. I can't stress it enough, and I use that term loosely. So if you are smoking in the wind, just be mindful, because the wind blows through your cigar. It will mess up. It will mess it up. I guarantee it. That's all right. So did I enjoy this cigar? Yeah, and honestly, towards the middle of the cigar, it picked up in strength to medium full. The spice picked up, jalapeno spice, it's quite nice. So even for a big gauge cigar, the cigar had some big flavor to it, and, and a respectable medium to full, and at a, at a three quarter uh, darkness. The cigar is, you know, it has a good feel to it. I'm not saying it's a stout cigar. I'm not saying it's, it's a scary cigar. It's, it's not even as strong as a, a, a 64 uh, Padron, but you know, but it's, it's a it's a it's a comfortable three quarter strand cigar that is still delicious enough that I think you should try it at least once. You know, is it box worthy for me? I would say no, but I'm not saying don't buy a box. You got when I say box worthy, that's also not just a statement of buying the box. It's a statement of accreditation um, that it's it's really recommended. This was a good cigar. I, I, I got it on the clearance rack and it was much cheaper. Full price, I don't know what it is. Maybe 10 bucks. But anyways though, but la the real winner this weekend was last night, the, the Puro Ambar. That was one of the best new cigars, even though it wasn't, it's not new, it's been out for I think two years. But new cigars to me, that I've had in a while, in that, uh, especially in the mid-tier pricing. If you haven't watched the Ambar, uh, uh, the Amber, review, watch it, just just buy that cigar. The, the Puro Amber literally feels like a cheaper version of the Opus X, because it is a Dominican Puro. Um, not saying it's better than Opus X at all, but it, it feels like a, like, a, like a younger, cheaper Opus X, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, th I think that, that, that cigar has its, its role. This cigar is not the same gambit, this cigar's not going on the Richie list, but it was delicious. I wanted to end it on this. I, I watched these commercials they're putting on YouTube and on TV for Lumi, L-U-M-I. Have you heard of this, Lumi? Lumi apparently is like this deodorant cream, or 
it's, it's not just for your underarms, and they're advertising it to women. And it's uh, it's not like deodorant like you think, like underarms. It's body deodorant, and they specifically advertise it for your crack and, and the nether reach. I'm being dead serious. This is what they advertise. And they said in our lab testing, <laughs> People had this much, you know, were this fresh or this much bacteria after a shower, and then they had this chart for every every hour, and then, you know, without looming, you know, within let's say 12 hours, your body starts stinking. They said with Lumi, after 72 hours, there was still no smell, and I'm sitting there going, no, 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 you don't just get to skip a shower for three days and rub Lumi between your spaces. Whew. Can you imagine that you on a date with a girl? You're like, wow, you smell nice. It's Lumi. Run. Run. Any girl using Lumi is like, listen, I don't want to shower every day. She so shower twice a day. One's not even an option. One does one unless you're in a coma and then you get a sponge bath. But one's not even an option. If you're breathing, you're taking at least one shower a day. Period. That's not even negotiable. Non-negotiable. Two showers. If you go to work in the morning, you shower before work. Then you come home, you shower again. But to shower every three days and just use Lumi? Are you loony? Are you loony tunes? Lumi, look this stuff up. Just wiping Lumi everywhere. I don't need a shower. Oh, I'm getting married today. I haven't showered in a week. Get some Lumi. Woof. No. Nasty. Nasty, nasty. So that is Lumi. Don't check it out. But watch the commercial. They're literally advertising to be disgusting. Cleanliness is, is close to godliness. Stay fresh, eat prunes, intensive for camping.